I want to know um, with you guys, you know, there's certainly easier ways to live your life than uh, build a public company and find lost Spanish wreckage hundreds of feet under the, or, you know, in, in the water and right. ocean floor accounting for both, you know. So what drives you all uh, to finish this mission? I, I'm just hooked on the creative process. Uh, I call it, uh, you know, I call it a passion. My wife calls it an addiction. Um, <laughs> I, I really am old Susan. consumed with solving the problem. Mm. And, 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 and this particular problem is so multifaceted and so intriguing because it involves not just technology, but history. And then whenever, I, and I'm a history fanatic, I love history. So just the idea of doing that and, and engaging with the archaeologists and the researchers and the, and one of the reasons, like, for example, that we, in the conservation lab is, is two doors down from the technology lab is so the engineers can go over there and pick up a 1500s cannonball and, and figure out how to find it. Mm -hmm. it it's, a, it's a really dynamic, engaging thing, um, which to me is far more thrilling than, let's say, you know, building a cyber security, you know, um, device, you know, because I'm dealing with physical, real physical things, mm. you know. Because some, something I've always appreciated, something I tell a lot of our shareholders, um, when you had just started Wild Manta and I uh, came on board and I was, I was, I was uh, beginning to assist uh, on the business development side, um, I watched someone come in and, and, and you were a startup, right? I mean, I mean, you've had your own success, but the business needs to stand on its own, mm -hmm. right? So um, you were a startup that was doing, helping these startups. And so um, this person, they came in, they had an idea, they had money for you to build their idea. And after a couple of days, you called them and you said, I think it's a bad idea. So I, I, I'm not going to build it because I don't want you to waste your money. That told me the kind of guy that I was working for. And that's why I had confidence to bring this guy um, to, to you. And that's why I had confidence when you said, Matt, it could be done. You know, um, I believe that you could do it. So, I mean, on an ethical side, like, like what, what, drives, what drives Tim? You know, as far as the, Tim, the businessman, Tim, the, you know, the dad, the father, the husband. Uh, I, actually, what's interesting is I'm fortunate that two of my three children work with me. Yeah. And, and, I, and I get a joy every day of working with them and mentoring them. And if you look at my staff, most of it is new grads or interns. I love that mentoring aspect and, and helping turn that creative light on in them. Um, when I study and, and, and a solution or a, pr a problem and come up with a solution. And I, and I like seeing them accomplish more than they thought they could ever accomplish. Yeah. You know, so just the joy of working with in that environment every day yeah. uh, beats the heck out of anything else that, that I could be doing at this stage of my life. And, I, and I've been really, really fortunate in that even when I uh, was a, an employee at Harris Corporation, um, they let me play like that. And I call it play because I don't think I've ever worked hard. I, I've really have always been, I've had the opportunity to be put in an area where I can solve problems. Mm. And that's just what I, I live uh, to work on, is sure. solving problems and working with people. And I, ha I had a really good mentor. Um, and this may be an old cliche, but he, 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 he said it to me and it meant something. He said, it's not what you accomplish yourself that makes you a good leader. It's what you accomplish through others. Yeah. So I, I would be nothing without the great team of people that I have around me. Awesome. I can think of nothing and build nothing without inspiration from God and the willingness of the people around me to follow that guidance. That's cool. I can do nothing. That's good. Oh, how about you, man? Wow. Well, you know, <laughs> hearing that, mine sounds pretty crappy. Oh. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I'm all about wealth and the creation <laughs> of wealth. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. But like Tim, you know, I, I feel God was a big part of this. You know, he, 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 
he took me through some rough times, you know. The family stayed together during these rough times and roller coaster rides that I had and changing of companies and businesses and, 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 and we were very blessed because when I was here trying to raise some money to keep the company afloat, uh, I met all these scientists and I kept asking these scientists, hey, can you build something that can see gold and silver under the sand? No, that can't be done. No, it can't be done. No, here's your problem. Here's another problem. You got ocean water. You got sand. You can't run electricity through it. You don't have an x-ray on the other side to pick up the beam as it travels through the whatever you're going through, right? All I heard was no, 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 and no, you know? And uh, by and again, I think there's some kind of divine guidance here that I was able to meet Matt Helmentoller. And, uh, you know, Matt heard what I wanted to do, and, and I did tell him, I am so tired of finding nails, okay? <laughs> and uh, so <clears throat> he knew to introduce me to Tim. And uh, I explained the problem to Tim. He was very patient, had a lot of questions. And he said, let me think about it, and I'll get back to you. Four months went by. It was like, okay, you know, after like two days, it's like, yeah, okay, this guy, he's not going to help me, <laughs> you know. And uh, I didn't realize how intense he was, you know, in, in the depth that he goes to. Yeah, okay? he didn't just shoot you an answer off the top of his head like everybody else talked to you. you. Right. No, he dove deep into it. And, and when he came back, he had a real answer. And uh, he had thought out these processes and, and, and how you build something that can shoot some kind of super beam into the ocean and tell you what kind of metal it is. He built you, you know. a flux capacitor. Yes, something very That's close to that. <laughs> exactly, Stop exactly. The dock over there. Uh -huh. yep. and, and, and to be dock able, to, again, to create those things from a blank sheet of paper, you know, uh, that. It just boggles my mind, you know, how he's capable of doing that. Yeah. And, uh, we, and and again, thanks to your help again, Matt, uh, we, we, we had the good fortune of being able to keep the company financed. And uh, you, you've been an integral part of that. And, yeah. and so the combination of these things uh, have allowed us to get to where we're at. Yeah. Be, because, you know, I was working by myself, raising money every month, for 15 years on a company that never succeeded as far as finding treasure. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a treasure company? How much treasure have you found? Uh, that'd be none. <laughs> you know, but could you put some money in so maybe I could? <laughs> you know, where's your stock? Oh, it's sub penny. <laughs> you know? Oh, you're a sub penny stock, a treasure company, and with no treasure. Oh, yeah, I'll load up on this one, right? <laughs> you know, back the truck up, yep. fill it up, right? And, uh, you know, so <clears throat> Kyle, there I have, had to be some kind of divine intervention to make this happen. I agree. Well, Kyle, I have to push back a little bit on your, your uh, I'm just the money man, I'm just the wealth guy kind of thing because, um, you know, I, I have a, a really good friend, accountant, who, you know, couldn't be any more different than me. Uh, you know, I'm a designer. I'm a visual, visually sophisticated. Uh, you know, Excel sheets don't mean much. You know, right. but but uh, I, one of my very good friends, who a brilliant accountant, he told me one day. He said, Connor, you understand that there's no mission without margin. He's like, those things don't operate independently of each other, or you have a hobby, right? Right. And so, you in, your, in your case, what what you're doing is also uh it is, is like crucial to pushing the cause forward and you use your lens um to uh push the company forward and it's a part of the creative process just like uh tim's engineering skills you know so um i i think just from observing kyle uh, and how f uh, friendly you are and like the conversations i see you having with people and the joy that you admit that what you're talking to one of your shareholders or just anybody that you run right. into, um, you know, it seems like pleasing those uh, people and just uh, making people happy seems to be a big part of you yeah. as a person. Uh, Thank you for saying that because I really do care about people, mm. especially my team, okay? Mm. I will stand up and fight for my team, all right? No doubt about it. I've seen dozens and dozens of startups, okay? Startups can take a year. Startups can take 
decades. Yeah. Okay. The startup is all about <clears throat> changing if to when. Right. Okay. Every startup starts out as if I succeed, you know, and you have to build all these different aspects and, and it's unique to each company what aspects you have to build to change that if to a win. Mm -hmm. Seafarer has changed an if to a win. Yep. Right. So that's when you when you look at investing, the early, early, early stage is investing in an if. Yep. Later stage is investing in a win. Right. So I think that that Seafarer, by transitioning from the if to a win, is just like any other startup. And I, I say this because you're just like any other startup, but but it is, it's true. Yeah. You know whether it's a, a, a wow. you know a Swift Pause or a Microsoft or a whatever. Right. You know at some point they switch from being a if I can build this thing to when I can sell it. Right. You know, and right. there because there is an opportunity in this case. We know the shipwrecks are there. We know right. the technology is there. We it, it's a win. So, and, and that's win. actually W H E N, not win. And, and you win. and I have never had this conversation where you use that terminology. It's really funny. That's the same terminology I use with all of the people that I talk about with Seafair and then other ones. It's like, you know, the goal of what we do as we're working with all these different companies and we're trying to plug in the holes is that we're trying to take away the if. You're trying to take away the and, and, if, and you're trying to make it a win. All right. So if, 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 if this was the timeline, we want to shrink it to here as quickly as, and most efficiently as possible. I think that that's what's happening with with uh, with with Seafair for sure, with the help of Wild Manta, yeah. with the help of Legacy Angel Network, with the help of the rest of the community. Um, I mean, it, and it's, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a a labor of love and a labor of exploration. We're, we're all excited about what this could be. And um, yeah, we're just so glad you guys were able to join us today. And this is a lot of fun. And I'm sure, Tim, you had a blast. Tim, you were very, you were very taller and almost man. We I'm appreciate done. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, just a, a Steve Jobs sentiment on tech. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this quote before, but his uh, his sentiment when he released the iPhone was that um, you know people are some of the slowest animals on the earth until you give them a bicycle. Right, and so like you guys are that for the industry. You are that for uh, the treasure hunting industry. You know, right. uh, the sea search of the things that you guys have created um, are going to change the course of history. You know? Right. Well, you know, taking that just a step further. Obviously, I love our Juno site because it's massive. It's old. It's, to my knowledge, never been salvaged. Right. All right. If there was zero on Juno, first I'd cry a little bit. Okay. <laughs> But I'd get over it in a couple minutes, and then I'd go after five more shipwrecks that I know where they are, and they're between the 1500s and 1600s. They've never been salvaged to our knowledge. There's no records of their salvage, et cetera. We don't know their origin yet, but we know basic years, okay? We'd put that sea searcher on those. I'd find out real quick, hey, do these things have anything of any value, right? And in the meantime, we can still mark what we've learned from what it picks up, even if they didn't have anything so you know th this this and, and what he's built is just phenomenal and you know he made a comment we're looking for major wrecks the, the device will see something the size of my fist and and if he really wanted to take it down to find a coin he could find a coin right i mean this thing as it scans going across our site it, it was scanning uh, almost ten thousand times across one foot he slowed it down a little bit to where it's only like what, 2,500 times? Yeah. Okay, 2,500 times. Okay, maybe it won't see a sheet of paper on its edge, okay? But you scan something 2,500 times yeah. in a foot, you know, okay, I'm thinking you're getting a pretty decent picture, okay? And uh, the, the, just the way this thing is working is phenomenal. But the help from all you guys. And, and Connor, you and Aubrey helping us with getting some exposure because nobody's ever heard of us. I don't advertise. I don't promote. You know, I'm not out there pushing the stock. I don't believe in doing things artificial because that's my background as a broker. And a lot of those companies I took public, they'd do these promotions and they'd pump the stock for a couple of days and then it just collapse. And uh, I saw it repeatedly. 
You're not building and, a stock, you're you know, building a business. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and at some point in time, I want it to be the best there ever was. Yeah. And, and I'm going to make sure that happens. And uh, take some time. But when I have people like you guys around me, oh, my gosh, it makes it so much easier. <laughs> you know? Well, to <laughs> quote Hannibal from the A-Team, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah, thanks so much for, for, uh, for being on with us. Today. All right. Cheers to that. Y'all. Cheers. Yeah, man. All right, guys. Kyle and Tim, everybody, thanks for listening. Oh, thank you.